Today I'll be reviewing the CFFA 3000. This is the third generation of the CFFA card developed by R&D Automation and the first product of theirs I've ever owned. I first heard about this card's development back in September of 2010 and I've been on the waitlist for it ever since. Well, the wait's over as the card arrived earlier this week. I had time to set it up and play around with it yesterday and I thought I'd just do a quick review to give my impressions on what I think of the card. So as you can see, there are two media input slots. You have one for a compact flash card and one for a USB device. Now as if a USB device on an Apple II wasn't cool enough, you can actually use both of those inputs at the same time. Now personally, I'm using my CF card mainly just for my hard drive partitions. And I'm going to be using the USB stick for my virtual disk images. Now there's nothing from stopping me from using them the other way around or, or just using one of the hard drives and not the other. But that's just how I roll, so get over it. So here's the menu screen for the card, and it's accessed by holding the letter M during startup, or if you're using a 2GS, you just go to the control panel basically anytime and select the CDA that comes with the card. And so you can see it says USB ready, CF ready, so I have both of those devices connected to the card, I'm ready to go. And the first order of business is to assign a disk two slot, and I chose slot number four, and basically what that refers to is which slot number do you want to assign for the virtual Apple II disks. And the reason I chose slot 4 was because slot 5 and 6 actually use the smart port and disk port respectively. And so I just didn't want there to be any conflict if I actually use the floppy disks themselves. Now that's my logic. Whether it's good logic or bad logic, I have no idea. Uh, but that's my rationale. And so the next step here is to assign your disk to images. And so these are all the images I have on my CF card. If I press space, it's going to toggle to the USB stick. And so here's all the images I have there. And so from here, you just assign the image either to virtual disk 1 or 2, uh, just by pressing number 1 or 2 while you have the image highlighted. And then you can press tab and it goes over to the images and so you can just remove them or replace them uh, with another image. So that's how the actual five and a quarter uh, virtual disk images work. So smart port devices work in much the same way except you don't actually have to assign the image to a disk number. And I have my smart port assigned to slot number seven, which is typically used for a hard drive. And Again, you just press space to toggle between the compact flash and USB device. And so I mentioned I have most of my hard drive partitions on the compact flash card. And so uh, there you can see them all there as well as a couple disk images. And so on the right, I have all of the images in the order that I want them displayed in with the boot volume being the first one in the list. So here you can see you can also import to disk image, which means you can actually back up a disk that's in one of the uh, disk drives. And so that's a pretty sweet feature, I think. And then you can add it right to the USB or compact flash and boot from it. And you can also create a new blank disk. And here's some additional settings you can play around with as well. But let me go ahead and boot this thing up because I'm sure you're anxious to see it actually working. So once you have all the images assigned the way you want them, go ahead and go to boot. And I actually time the boot sequence compared to the micro drive IDE controller. And I actually have to admit that the micro drive beat this one out by three seconds using the same CF card. So that's unfortunate, but you know, if three seconds is going to be a deal breaker, well, I'm sorry, but uh, you're actually going to be missing out on a really fantastic card. So here you can see it's booting up and I actually upgraded my card to 256 megabytes just so I could have a few more partitions as well. So here they come. And so I mentioned that you can always go in there and change those assignments as well and add in more images or remove them. And so again, just go to the control panel, go to the CFFA uh, CDA, and here you go. I can just add in an additional image. Uh, let's see, what's one I can add in here? How about Battle Chess? So I'm going to add that as the um, seventh smart port device. And there it is. Opens right up. 
So pretty slick device. And the setup time, actually putting those images on the device was so quick. I mean, literally a few minutes, you can be up and running. And so very impressive. So let me restart and go back in here. And I want to show you one more really awesome feature. So one of the reasons I got this card was because it supports booting off a virtual floppy disk. Now there are a lot of Apple II and 2GS titles that simply are not hard drive installable. And so you have to boot off an actual disk to play them. Test Drive 2 is one such title, and for 2GS users, it's notorious for taking several minutes to boot up to the title screen. So let's see how long it takes now. Under 10 seconds. Test Drive 2 booted in under 10 seconds. Never thought I'd see the day when that happened. For 2GS users that like to have the cover over their board, I definitely recommend getting a USB extension like this one. I picked this one up for 5 bucks today off Craigslist, and it just makes the ease of use even easier. Just download your images, stick them on the USB drive, and stick them in there. So what are my thoughts on the CFFA 3000? Well, it's simply amazing. It's a very well-designed piece of hardware that makes setting up and transferring Apple II images just crazy easy. If I had to criticize it, I would only suggest a couple small things. Currently, USB devices have to be formatted with a master boot record to be supported by this card. Now, for Windows users like me, it's easier said than done because I don't believe Windows has a way of doing that without a third-party tool. Now, for Mac users, you have the Mac Disk Utility that does let you put an MBR on your device during format. The only other thing I would say was maybe putting the ability to assign or remove smart port images to a specific line on the right. And that way I don't have to remove all of my hard drives in order to boot off a single virtual floppy disk. There may be a way to do that and I just haven't figured it out yet, but if not, that would be a cool feature. But these are very small factors in an otherwise amazing piece of hardware. I can now truly be without a floppy disk. Thanks for watching.